Hello everyone and welcome to Embed Actionable Analytics with Power BI Embedded. My name is Amit Schuster, I'm Product Manager for Power BI Analytics and today we're going to have a special session for developers. We're going to talk about what is Power BI Embed Analytics, then we will talk about the difference between Embed for Organization and Embed for Customers. We will have a special demo for of the playground where we will do some live coding in the developer sandbox. Uh, then you will see uh, Power BI in Jupyter Notebook. So I'll show you how you can embed your reports inside Jupyter Notebook's environment. And we will finish with our new sample for encrypt credentials and update data source. So let's start with what is Power BI Embed Analytics. Uh, Power BI Embed Analytics lets you embed Power BI Analytics in your web application, and you can also brand it as your own. Um, it lets you personalize your user experience in visual, so you can deliver your users insights uh, from Power BI and they can also perform actions from insights. Uh, the analytics is delivered with total confidence, so all the information of the user is secured, and you can use role-level security or object-level security uh, to limit the user's access to data. Um, and our product is purpose-built for developers, so we have the client APIs, the REST APIs, and tools that will help you get started uh, and automate processes, and will also help you minimize time to market. Um, so now let's go see a demo of uh, how to get data-driven insights with Power BI Analytics. Uh, let's go see the Contoso sales demo. Welcome to the Contoso sales demo. And here you can see a CRM application that is based on Power BI Analytics. Um, everything that you are going to see now is open source, so you can go and click here in the bottom on find the source code and see all the source code on GitHub. So let's go and start with the salesperson, and I'm going to log in as June Smith. Uh, when you will visit this site, you can click here on enter in demo mode to experience it by yourself. So here you can see June Smith's homepage, and in her homepage, she can see all the KPIs that are relevant for her work. Um, and she can also go here and personalize home. Um, what she, June Smith can do here is choose what the KPIs that are most important to her and what she wants to see in her home screen. So she can choose which visuals to hide and she can also change the visuals layout. Uh, this is done by using our client APIs uh, that allow you to, to, to set custom layout. Um, next, June Smith can go to the leads page. And again, here at the top, she have all the KPIs that are relevant for the leads page. So, so she can see what's the leads count, uh, how much of them won. Um, and June Smith see here all, only the data that is relevant to her. So the data is filtered using role level security only to the leads that are relevant for June Smith. Um, an additional feature that we have here uh, from Power BI Embedded is the option to set theme. So I can set a dark theme, which will set uh, the whole application, both the application part that you can see here at the top and the Power BI report that is embedded here uh, into dark theme. And as always, Power BI is interactive. So I can click on uh, leads by source, for example, and filter everything to the web. So now I get only information about leads uh, that I got from the web. June Smith can also perform actions here. So if I'll go here to the bottom, I can see a table of all the new leads that I have. I can click here on add new lead, and I can add here the, the information about uh, the account name, uh, the full name of the uh, contact, uh, what he's going to buy. So let's say we buy now uh, 250 laptops. I can set the rating and the source where I got it from and click on save. Now, when I click on save, this is doing a write back to my data source. Here we're using Microsoft Dataverse as our data source. Um, and after this is done and the data is written back to the data source, uh, the report will refresh and you can see immediately the data here uh, in the table. Um, this happens because the report is connected with direct query. Um, what I can also do here is I can right click and click on edit lead. This is an extension command uh, that we added and I will show you later on on the playground how you can do it yourself. And when I click on this edit lead, this will open a custom dialog again where I can do more actions. Um, now I can qualify the lead, I can disqualify the lead uh, and I can work with the data. And whenever I do some actions, so let's disqualify the lead, you can see that it's now not in the table and it's not in the data source anymore. Now let's move on from June Smith. Uh, let's log out and log in as a sales manager as Donna Paul. Here on Donna's Paul home screen, you can see all the KPIs that are relevant to her. Um, 
not like June Smith, don't post the data of all the sellers. So you can see on the top left, the visual of actual revenue by top five sellers, and you can see June Smith at the top. Um, now I'll go to the analytics page to show you some of the uh, Power BI AI visuals. So here in the analytics page, you can see the Power BI AI visuals. For example, you can see the visual that gives you actual revenue forecast by month. Um, you can also see the decomposition tree where I can have a distribution of the estimated revenue um, and the key influencer that show me what is the likelihood for something, uh, for, for example here, uh, what is the likelihood of opportunity status being closed one and what affects it. So in this data, you can see that what affects the opportunity status is mostly the estimated revenue. Um, so uh, Donna Paul can go here and she can uh, interact with the data and see the forecast. If you want to see more of the Contoso sales demo, you should definitely go check the EMBA session that we had earlier this month. Now, let's move back to the presentation. So now let's talk about the difference when embedding for your organization or your customers. So the option that you see at the top requires end user authentication to Power BI. This is when you embed for your organization. Uh, we have our option, which is powered by the Power BI client SDK. And you also have the option to simplify embed uh, using a development uh, or embed in SharePoint and Teams. Uh, we also have the option to embed for your customers. Uh, this is where your users don't have Power BI license. So let's talk about these two scenarios that are powered by the Power BI client SDK. Uh, embed for organization and embed for customers. Embed for organization is for internal users where all your users have Azure AD accounts. Uh, they authenticate to Azure AD uh, where they are redirected to Azure and then redirected back to your application and all of them need to have some end user licensing. Um, when you embed for a customer, this is for external user and you can use your own authentication method. Um, your users don't need any user license to Power BI and you manage the authentication. So um, you authenticate to Azure using a service principal or a master user. And then this identity is used to generate embed tokens for your end user. So they, can, they only need to sign in once. Now let's move on to the playground where I will show you some live coding in the developer sandbox. So welcome to the Power BI Embed Analytics Playground. Uh, this is the home of Power BI Embed Analytics where you can get hands-on experience, explore APIs, and see showcases. Um, you can also find here the Learning Center where you can find all the resources that you need to get started um, and all the references to the APIs. Um, so let's start with showing you the Explorer APIs. Um, we're going to show you the Explorer APIs and the showcases real quick, and then we will focus on the Developer Sandbox. So here in the Explore APIs, you can see that on the left side, I have the Explore Our APIs pane, where I can see all the different APIs that we have for Power BI Embed Analytics. And I can click here on Set Slicer State, which will immediately run the API. If you want to see what is the API that is running, you can click here on the additional options and click on Show Code Snippet, which will show you exactly the code that is being run in the background. Um, here you can copy the code. Um, and you can also open the log in this scenario. So I can click on show log and now I can choose, for example, the API to get slicer state. And this will return me uh, the filter object of this slicer uh, where you can see the target table and column is date because uh, this is this date slicer uh, and you can see what are the values. So let's move on to the showcases. These are our uh, advanced scenarios where you can find the source code for all of them on GitHub. So let's start with um, go from insights to quick action. In this showcase, you can see uh, same as you saw uh, in the Contoso demo uh, that I get from the report to an action uh, on my application side. So I can go ahead and filter this report to the customers that I want to engage with. Then when I click create a campaign, this will send an event to my application that I can act on. And from this event, I can open a custom dialogue. This is this dialogue is not part of Power BI, um, and it's part of the application. Here, I can do some additional filtering. So, for example, I can choose not to, to send the campaign to these uh, guys, and I can click on send coupon or send discount uh, and perform the action. Um, if I want to see the source code, you have here the button to get resources. So, so you should definitely go check it out if this is something that you want to implement in your application. Uh, and we also have here, for example, the showcase for customized report colors and mode. 
So in this showcase, you can choose the theme that you'd like. So I can choose what theme do I want in my report, and I can also turn on dark mode. So this is really cool, and in this way, every uh, consumer can choose how we want to consume the report, uh, what colors, and what mode. Um, now let's move to the developer sandbox, and I'll start with use my own report. So when using your own reports, first you will need to sign in uh, to Power BI, uh, and then you will be able to choose what workspace you want to bring the report from and which report you want to embed. And after clicking embed, uh, the report will be uh, rendered at the bottom of the screen. So before we start coding, I'm going to hit F12 and open the developer tools and go to the console. Um, what you can do in the developer sandbox is that you can just go and drag and drop the APIs from the left side. So um, let's start with menu operation and let's go and do extend context menu. Um, now I have the code here and I just click run uh, to run the code as it is. Um, and this code will add an extend context menu. So now when I right click on a visual, you can see that I have here additional context menu command that when I'll click on it, uh, I can get an event triggered uh, where I get all the details of the data point that was clicked and what page, what report and what visual. Now um, let's go and do some modifications. So I want this command not to be for the whole report. I want it only to be for the sales map. I want only this visual to have this menu and I want it also to be at the top. So um, how I'm going to do that? Um, let's go uh, to the command, click on the additional options and click on learn more. This will take us to the documentation, uh, the client side documentation, where I can see all the information about this API. Um, and what I'm looking for is the option to apply setting to a specific visual. Um, so let's open the selectors article. So here in the selectors article, I have the supported features and I'm going to click on modify menu commands. Um, here you can see the code snippets that actually shows me how to set a selector for a visual name. And also I have here the option for the menu location. So let's start with the menu location and get it inside our code. So I'll go ahead and add here under the title inside the visual context menu, the menu location object um, and the menu location top. And I also want to add here the uh, selector. So I'll go and I'll copy this code, uh, but I don't have the visual name. So this is something that I should get before uh, running this code. And before we start getting the, the visual name, um, instead of setting here new settings and then calling the update settings function, I want these settings to be set on the report load. So I'll just go and copy this extensions object and I'll go to del and delete all these new settings and update settings functions. Um, and here I'm going to the top, we'll go to the embed power report function and under config settings, here you can see all the settings that the report is run with. Uh, for example, we have here the panes object where you can set the filters pane and page navigation uh, um, status. So I can also set the visibility here to false. And I can add here in the settings, the extensions object that I just copied. So I'll just go here and fix the um, tabs. So now I have here this command. So let's go and change the name of it from extension command to command one. I have here the selector uh, that is looking for a visual name. Um, as I currently don't have the visual name, let's just call it uh, visual one, two, three, and we will find it in a second. Uh, and here you can see the title. So for the title, let's do um, get more insights. Okay, um, so now uh, if I run this code, this report will render and I won't have uh, this context menu anywhere because I didn't define uh, the right visual name for it. So let's use a new event that we have. Let's, write, let's start with report off uh, to remove all existing uh, event handlers. So we will use uh, visual clicked uh, and then we'll do a report on visual clicked. And here, what I'm going to do, I'm going to set a function uh, that gets the event. And what it's going to do is just going to console log uh, this event detail. And that's it. Now I will run this code. And whenever I will click on the visual, you will see here in the console that I get the page name, report name, and visual name. And as I mentioned before, I want to set this context menu only for the sales map. 
So let's get the name of this sales map. And here you can see the unique identifier for this uh, visual, which has the type of shape map. Um, so I'll go copy this name and I'm going to add it here um, instead of visual one, two, three. So now I have here the right visual name. Um, and the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to um, act only when the command is command one. So I'll go here at the bottom to the command trigger event. The command trigger event is, is triggered whenever a custom command is being uh, clicked. So any command that you will add either to the options menu or the context menu uh, will get to this event. And because I don't want um, all the events to trigger my code, only uh, this specific context menu. So I will write here where command details dot um, command is equal command one. Only then I want my code to console log, uh, let's say more insights. So now let's go ahead and run the code. So you can see now whenever I right click on a visual, I wouldn't see this command, but if I'll go to the sales map, I'll have here at the top the get more insights. And when I'll click on that, you can see that the more insights is being logged. So this is how you can define your own commands and you can uh, do some special and interesting uh, insight to action scenarios in your app. So that's something you should definitely consider when building your integration. Okay, so this is how you can add the extension command, and I want to show you additional feature that we have here on the playground. Uh, this is a new feature that lets you do an autosave and let you save your uh, code and pick up where you left off. So I'll just go ahead and turn on this autosave. Um, in this case, I already have a saved code, uh, but in your case, when you will first toggle it off, you won't get this dialog, but I want to use the current code, so I'll just click continue. And this will override the saved code that I have uh, for the code that we just wrote. And now whenever I will uh, go out of this experience, so let's move for example for the Explorer APIs, or let's say close the playground and then I come back in a month. When I will come back to the developer sandbox, I'll have the option either to uh, continue where I left off or to start over. So this is super powerful because I can just click on yes, continue, click on run, and I will start from the same state um, that I was before. So now the report will load, and if I'll go ahead and go to the sales map, you will see that I have here the get more insights that we just configured. So this is really cool, and you should definitely go check it out and leave us feedback. Uh, if you want to leave any feedback on the playground, uh, you have here the right top, uh, the satisfaction survey, so you should definitely go and fill it out and let us know what you think. So this was the embedded playground. Now let's talk about Power BI Embedded Gen 2. We've just released the Power BI Embedded Generation 2. This is in public preview now. And the Power BI Embedded Generation 2 is a capacity that gives you now an enhanced performance, so you will get better performance on any capacity size. Um, it will give you also greater scale, so there will be no limits on refresh concurrency and fewer memory restrictions. You will also have a lower entry level for paginated reports and AI workloads, so you can start with A1 and grow as you need. Um, scaling is now instantly and without downtime, so this is a real improvement from the Gen 1 uh, capacities, and you will also have improved metrics that will help you do automation on them. And additional release that we have this month is the uh, Embed Power BI and Jupyter Notebook package, uh, so let's go and see that. Okay, so here you can see the uh, Jupyter Notebook where I can, I'm going to embed a Power BI report. So first I start by importing the Power BI client um, and import the report object from there. After that, I'm going to authenticate to Power BI and here I'm going to use the device authentication. So I'm just going to copy this code and click on the link here. And now I need to enter the code that I just copied and this will let me uh, authenticate uh, to my user, and after I'm signed in, I can close this browser window. Um, and when I come back to the uh, notebook, you can see that now I'm logged in and the authentication was successfully complete. Um, after that, when I want to embed my report, I just need to provide the report ID, group ID, and either the access token or the authentication object uh, 
that we just created. Um, I can also set some report event handlers as we saw before. Uh, so here I have the uh, loaded event and the error callback. Um, and to render a report, I just call the report object, which will render the report into the cell output. And you can see that the event that we just uh, configured that is going to print, um, actually you can see the result of it here at the bottom. Um, so um, with Jupyter, what we allow you to do is we allow you to interact it in two ways. So I can export data uh, from the report. So for example, uh, if I wanna export the data from the sales map um, and then work with pandas, for example, in Python, um, so I can go and do and get the active page so I'm getting the active page and the actual visual uh, that has the type of shape map as we saw before. Uh, then I can do an export summarized data uh, from the sales map and here you can see the data and I can also go and do some modifications for it. Uh, for example, if I want to remove the dollar sign um, so I can do that, then I can go and visualize it uh, with the data framework plot. So here you can see an additional insight that I can get in the notebook while I'm storytelling my, my data story uh, using also Power BI reports. Um, and I can also interact the other way around. So if I want to affect uh, the report from the notebook, that's also possible. So for example, I can set here a filter uh, function that will filter a report according to a region. And here you can see the filter object that I defined. Here I, I have an IPy widget uh, that helped me to uh, filter to each region. Uh, and I can also render the same report here at the bottom. And now I move to the sales map and I set the region, for example, to uh, Southwest. You can see that the report is filtered to Southwest and this is really let you do an interactive reporting uh, with Jupyter Notebooks and Power BI. So also let us know what you think about that. Um, if you want to leave us feedback, check out the dedicated blog for the Power BI and Jupyter Notebooks. Uh, we will also have documentation with all the functions and uh, everything that you can do here. Um, so let us know what, what are you going to do with that. So this was the demo of embed Power BI in Jupyter Notebook. And now we're going to talk about our developer samples improvements. So we have new samples for the Power BI developer samples. If you haven't checked it yet, uh, you should definitely go to the repository of Power BI developer samples where you can find all of our samples uh, that will help you get started. What we've just released is something that you asked for a long time, is the option to encrypt credentials and update data source uh, in Java and Python. So we released a uh, free samples uh, for .NET Core, Java and Python that will help you encrypt credentials and update data source. And let's go see it now. So this is our sample for encrypt Power BI data source credentials. And here you also have the option uh, to encrypt credentials. And I'll just go and demo how you can update the data source. So first we'll insert the uh, group ID and the data set ID that I'm going to work with. And I can click on get data sources to see what it is connected to. And after I click on get data sources, uh, you can see that the uh, choose a data source got updated and I can choose which data source uh, I want to work with. And let's go see the report for a second. So here I have the Power BI workspace and you can see the report here. And let me uh, move to the report. So here in the report, you can see that it's currently showing data for Canada. And what I said here, here this, is, this report is connected to SQL Server where we have two views that are set uh, to do different uh, credentials. Um, so now we see the Canada data and I'm going to change the credentials to use the uh, Australia login. And we will see here after the refreshing data, um, we will see here the Australia data. So let's go back to our sample application. And we chose the data source. Uh, we're going to choose basic credentials because this is what we're using here. And here I'm going to use now the Australia login uh, and the password that I have. And I don't have a privacy level here, so I'm just going to click Update Credentials. And I authenticate to this sample using a service principle. And you need to make sure the service principle is part of the workspace. He's an admin on, on the workspace. And uh, if you're using an on-prem gateway, make sure this service principle is also um, on this gateway. So now I updated the credentials. Um, and I'll go back to the uh, Power BI workspace. 
and I click on refresh and I will just refresh the data. Um, so this will start a refresh uh, work and after this data is being refreshed, um, I will see the updated data um, in my report. So let's open the report now. And you can see that my data is Australia. So using these samples, you can add data source, update data source and encrypt credentials in .NET, Java and Python. Uh, so I hope this will be really useful for you. OK, and before we finish, I want to share with you what is coming soon. Uh, soon we will have easy to use client APIs wrappers. Um, so you will have APIs that will allow you to move a visual, resize a visual and show and hide a visual uh, without setting the whole custom layout object and update the settings as you saw before. Um, we'll also have the functions to get the active page, resize the page and get all slice of state on a page. Um, this is something that you asked for a long time. Um, next, we'll have the option to add and remove context menu and options menu commands, uh, also without updating the whole settings object. And last but not least, we have the Fluent API for building filters. So this should really help you when uh, setting filters or setting slider state. Uh, you should definitely go check it out. This will be uh, coming out soon. Um, and before we finish, I want to share with you um, the Power BI and Analytics resources. So you have here the links to the playground, uh, to all of our documentation, to the 11 day course, um, developer samples, Contoso sales demo, and Stack Overflow. And you can also share your ideas and feature on the Power BI ideas. Um, and if you ask yourself what is the best way to get updates and help, so the best way to get updates is through our Power BI developer blogs uh, that we post. Uh, and to get help, you should definitely go check the Stack Overflow uh, with the Power BI embedded tag to get help from the whole developer community. Um, and what's next? Uh, if you want to learn more, you should also check the Power BI dev camp that is owned by Ted Pattison, who is currently on the Power BI CAT team. There you can find videos and samples for advanced developers. You can also explore the Power BI embedded blogs that I just mentioned and the product release notes. And to play, just go to the Power BI embedded analytics playground, um, go to the developer sandbox, play with the APIs and leave us feedback. Let us know uh, how do you feel about it and what are you missing. I really hope you enjoyed this session. Thank you for watching.